الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه وسلم أما بعد حبت في الله I wanted to just mention uh, an observation something that I observed from one of our brothers and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless him and continue to cure him and increase his rizq and increase him with kulli khair as well as all the dua to sunnah because the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam said a Muslim akhu Muslim yushiduhu ba'dhu ba'dha the Muslim is the brother to the Muslim and they strengthen one another and there's so many narrations of the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa alayhi wa sallam which show the Islamic brotherhood and show that we should want khair for one another and that we should not have hasid, we should not have jealousy and all the other exemplary attributes of the mu'min. And this observation I wanted to make because I love to see the du'at al-khair. And I don't mean this in a way to break the brother's back, so to speak, with praise. But I just want to say uh, that this is khair azim. And we love our brother for the sake of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, our brother Ismail Bomad. And the reason I just came across some clips that he's back teaching, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favored him through literally, it's been, I've been in communication with the brother for just a, a very short period of time. And he's already back teaching. And so what I wanted to mention with regards to this is this is the way that I have observed in my limited studies and travels uh, of a lot of the ulama sunnah is that throughout illnesses and it began with Imam Muqbil bin Hadi al-Wadi that with his illness he uh, you know continued teaching until he was basically unable and even in the hospital people in the hospitals Plural, people would come to visit him, ask questions. So the imam to the to his end, and from what I understand of a lot of the great imma that we love in this contemporary time, this was the situation. And of course, we have many examples in the salaf. So I just wanted to mention that and mention that the path of seeking knowledge and the path of sharing that knowledge is Aveem. It's such a great and uh, exalted path. And it's a steep path because not everyone can do that. Not everyone can do the Talib al-Ilm and be patient on that path. And not everyone can be patient in giving da'wah. I know many students of knowledge that studied in Yemen, that studied in Saudi and Egypt and, and many other places, graduates from the universities and people who also study in the Maracas, the, you know, the, the, the places of hadith and sunnah, but out of the many, <clears throat> there's only a limited few that really even maybe continue on and do da'wah. And from amongst those even, there's probably even fewer that really are out there uh, producing works, you know, either writing or something because you know the 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 thamarat al amal thamarat al ilm that the fruit of knowledge is amal is deeds good deeds so that doesn't mean they're possibly rectifying their family and they're rectifying themselves for those who Allah has favored with a certain degree of knowledge to go and share that but I have immense respect for those who continue and continue to share with others. Because ultimately we are in need of du'a to sunnah around the world. And this brings up another point that I want to mention. <clears throat> and that is to also, when people have questions and are looking for answers, to make use of those local du'at. Make use of those local imams that you have and shuyukh. Uh, or students of knowledge and whoever you have that has something that can benefit you, use your local uh, imams. If you're in Germany, for example, in a particular city in, in Germany, that you can uh, 
you know, use those imams if you have, uh, and I'm sure there must be some imams or some uh, students of knowledge from Germany that can field your questions. They know the situation in your country better than people externally. So they can help you and assist you, bi'idhnillah ta'ala. Likewise, in the UK, there are many all over the UK. Uh, and likewise, in America and other places. So use your local uh, people that have knowledge to benefit you. And if you're in a situation you don't have that access, that there, there are no du'a ta khair and sunnah, and you need to go external, then do so. And obviously the best scenario is if you have knowledge to ulama that understand your situation and the environment that you live in and can give you fatwa and answer the questions that you have. So that's just another point. And third point, I guess, is that we also like to see as our brother is doing and sharing and those other uh, du'at al-khayr around the world, du'at al-sunnah, that we would like to see uh, more access for the people to have questions. And I have utmost respect for our brother, Muhammad Munir, walau kariyal ahla bid'a, walau kariyal kafirun, walau kariyal whoever, no matter who hates it and who wants to criticize, but from what I know of him, I know khair and I see that he's doing khair and I often advise people to go ask him because he has a forum for it because he has knowledge and he has a forum for answering questions. And so I would like to see the students of knowledge and those shuyukh and, and brothers who've reached a certain level of knowledge and who can share and benefit the people to have their doors open because where else are the people going to go if you don't have your doors open for the people to ask you questions and the people to learn from you then you've opened the door to the hizbiyin and you've opened the door to ahla bid'ah to answer because ahla bid'ah will give you forums and they'll get, and they may have wealth and they have the resources and they're going to open the door so my advice is to keep those doors open that is kind of your responsibility it's a bit of your responsibility since you went and sought knowledge and you are in a position and you're sharing that knowledge. And we try to do the best that we can for those of us who have a little something to offer uh, to the extent of our ability, but uh, there are often times when it's overwhelming and it's over our, le our, 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 our level and maybe we don't have time to even ask or go seek out one of the ulama to ask and field your questions. So this is, we, we apologize for that, but we try to do the best we can because there's a difference also when someone has tafarrag, means they have time, that their job is to do da'wah. They're an imam, they are a resident scholar in a community, they are a da'i or something. But when you work totally outside the field of da'wah and you have a job and you have a family and you have the dunya on you, you have to survive and strive and struggle to make things happen and you don't have the same access to where you can even go and even research issues sometimes or even field or ask the ulama because you're so busy with your own uh, uh, issues and, and things that need to happen. So it's very important to have these concepts and make dua for your brothers and I just wanted to reach out to our brother and uh, and say Jazallah khairan and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all with ikhlas, with thabat and shafa. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure us all. May Allah bless us all. May Allah help us all. May Allah rectify our conditions and bless us to be a source of rectification for the Ummah of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in reviving the sunnah of the Prophet alayhi salatu wa salam, the aqidah of Ahlul Sunnati wal Jama'ah, not the aqidah of the Maturidiyah, wala Diyobandiyah, wala Jama'at Tibilikiyah, wala Ghayrihim. Then may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us to be a source of the good and definitely not the Tekfirin and the Khawarij and other uh, deviated sects. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.